Our second task is to create another circuit with some DC motors. So when you come in to the main page, remember we're going to click on circuits. We're not going to go through the learn area at the moment, we're going to go straight into creating a new circuit. You should already have one that you've made. If you're having trouble changing the name of it, always a good idea to name things, you can come in to the properties and you can change the name in there. We're going to create a new circuit. This time it's going to be a DC motor circuit. We're going to search for the Arduino. That gives us the board which we're going to need to control our motors. Now what we're going to do that's slightly different is that we're going to have to have two motors rather than one servo and that one there will do the trick. But we're going to have two motors available to us for our project that we can use for two different wheels. We can use them in different ways. So we'll look at how we would connect up two of them. Now, when we're controlling the two motors, we're going to be able to do it directly in the simulation from the Arduino board. But in real life, we find that these motors draw too much current, too much amperage. Therefore, we have to have a separate power supply. And we'll have a separate little control module. So I'm just going to substitute for that control module by putting a little mini breadboard in here which will pretend to be our control module and that's what we will use to control the two motors. So this is just going to be wiring but in real life it will be a little circuit board a bit like this and we'll connect it up in much the same way but just to make sure that we are uh, seeing that there is an extra step involved. So we have a negative wire, we're going to bring that across to a negative wire here. The negative from this one I'm going to bring that across as well and I actually want those two to join up so I'm going to join that all the way across to there. So now my two negatives are actually connected together. Always a good idea to color code things. Uh, we're going to use black for our negative line so we'll click on each of these and turn them black. That just makes it a bit easier to remember what's going on. Now this black line here is also going to connect through to our ground which we have as a ground pin and we can use that one right there so we'll connect that one as black as well. Now with the servo motor we were connecting that to the 5 volts and the ground down here and then we were controlling it with a signal line. Now we're going to use uh, two different pins here to control it um, but in actual fact the power from here, the signal, is going to go and it's actually going to end up going directly to the motor but what we're doing is um, just simulating what would happen if we had the uh, DC control unit here. So I'm going to take a pin 12 and bring it up to this line here and we will make that one yellow and I'm going to take pin 10 and we'll bring that one over to here and I'm going to make that one blue. Okay, so we can consider this to be our left one and this one perhaps to be our right one. Now that would go into this extra unit and from there it would uh, then go to the motor via an extra external power supply. But for us at the moment we're just going to connect that one straight across and we'll make that blue as well. And this one here we're going to connect across and we'll make that one yellow. And that's just showing us that we've got pin 10, which is going to my motor control box here, and that's going to turn on this motor. And then as that motor runs, the ground is going to come back along here, feed back here, and feed back into my ground control. And if I turn on pin 12, it's going to go up and join directly. It's as if I've put a line from here directly to here, but uh, remember we're using this breadboard to pretend to be our motor control unit. So we're now ready to drive this and uh, what we want to do is to get some code. So let's come up to our code editor here. Uh, again remember if you don't have blocks selected click on blocks. It comes with a built-in flashing light for the LED that's the startup program that's always there. Uh, we could leave that there or we can get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of mine and I need to now do some programming. So the first one I want is in my output area and in this case I'm going to set a pin high. This is the same way that I would set the LED 
pin here, I set it to high or to low. High means that there is a voltage going through it and low means there is no voltage. So this is a digital output. So it's on or off. So which pin am I setting high? Well I need to set pin 12 high and that would turn on this motor. Okay, so if I start my simulation you can see that it is turning around now and it's turning because it's only running at a very low voltage for this at 51 rpm. Again uh, we would usually be running this through a motor controller here. So that was using pin 12 and if I likewise change that to pin 10 and I start my simulation then I've turned on this motor here so you can see that's rotating nicely in there now. OK, and we'll stop my simulation. So obviously if I want to run both of my motors then uh, I'm going to have to bring this across and I want pin 12 and pin 10 to be on at the same time. Helps if I select the right one. So let's start both of those. So we've now got both of them running at the same time. So that's giving me my uh, power to perhaps a wheel or a propeller or a um, some sort of paddle or some gearing that's going to move my device forwards. So my two motors are being controlled by setting the pin high and I can now have a weight state in here and I can come back and get a, a, a pin low. So I'm going to get two of those and I want to turn them off so I'm going to go to a low state one there's low and this one here is low. Now if I run my simulation after one second of running it should turn off. Well why isn't it turning off? Because remember as in the last program that we saw it actually is running in a loop so it's got to the end of here and it doesn't know to wait any longer so I'm going to put another wait state in there and we'll make it wait for oh, four seconds. So let's run that again. So it's running and why is it not turning off? Well it's quite clear it's not turning off because you can see I haven't told it the pin to turn off. So here we're going to have to put in a 10 and here we're going to have to put in a 12. And now when we run it, it runs for one second and stops and then starts again. One second stops and then starts again. So it's looping around it's being switched on, waits for one second while it's running and then it gets switched off It waits for one second. We could make it switch off for a little bit longer, say five seconds and then we'll see more of an effect of it actually being turned off. So that's basically showing you how the program is working to make it move forwards. So it's turned off. It's going to turn back on again in a couple of seconds. There it is, it's turned on one second and turned off. Now this means that when we are doing our programming for the project we're going to be able to turn the motor on for a certain period of time and we're going to be able to turn the motor off. We'll look in some other sessions at ways that we could control the speed of the motor which is a little bit more difficult uh, and that's done with some pulse width modulation which lets us control how much power is going out so it turns it on and off very rapidly to control the speed. But for the moment we're just looking at you being able to set up a control so that with a breadboard you can do the wiring for two motors to be able to turn them on and off. Uh, if you can I'd like you to see if you could get that working and you can set up a variety of movements so try making it run for five seconds and then maybe make one motor run for one second and then the other motor run for another second and then have them all stop.